We use other methods to uh, measure the outcomes, some use other software, some use uh, for the experiment groups were inconsistent. And the environment were inconsistent. Uh, we didn't know if the, some of the patients were taking glucose from the condition group the experiment. Uh, so what we concluded with was that um, the computerized quantum field uh, rehabilitation had uh, mild to mild effect on the patients. But we also find some, find, found some limitations due to that uh, because the medications were taken out of the experiment, while uh, some of the patients uh, we couldn't document uh, the severity of the disease. But, uh, My, uh, the reason that it was hard to determine based on the severity was that uh, uh, the ones that were uh, the, uh, highly uh, impacted by that disease had less uh, positive outcome of the experiment, while the, the mild or less uh, impacted uh, participants had more uh, to gain from the experiments. Uh, there was also a cost benefit they looked at, and uh, they also concluded with that uh, the hospitals themselves should decide whether they should use uh, computerized uh, tools to rehabilitate the uh, patients since there was only a uh, minor or Yeah. So if you go down and have a look at some of the way they do the comparison. So um, uh, okay, but we should go back up. Um, so here, up, so the page with the diagram of how they talk. It. So bam, 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 bam. There. Yeah. Okay. So so part of the reason I I let you guys read the paper was to them kind of look at that process and analysis. Um, because this is not reporting an individual study that they did. This is a, an analysis of other studies. Um, so what do you think of their, their way of describing how they, lim they limited down the studies? It was very detailed. Um, it seems that uh, they have done a lot of work just to go through all the papers and then analyze them to see whether they're missing the material. Um, I think they've do, done a good job. So I mean, and can you guys see how you could follow a similar process to in a, in a, in a different, if, if you were looking in your own research area um, for the integrated project, for example, how you might start out with a large number of potential research papers and then start narrowing them down to the relevant ones. Right, we, don't, we don't expect you to read 350 papers, right? That's, that's a bit much. But um, 21 done in, in thoroughly is a reasonable number. Um, and <clears throat> if, if you have criteria, which means you got down to two studies that were included, your type criteria is too strict. You have, you have to broaden it out to get more. Right? If you end up with have 100 papers that you're supposed to read specifically and review, that's probably too many. So you need to make some go, go finer again. Right? So it's, sometimes it's not predetermined exactly how you're going to do this filtering. You still got to sort of think, okay, I've got to get to a reasonable number of papers that I'll be able to review and compare. Okay, so if you could scroll down a bit more. more. Um, <laughs> the second phase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the baby got yeah, Well, they had to review it. <laughs> when they're there and they're like, wait a minute, this first sentence isn't in English. That's the reason the paper's not. Um, it probably, and I'm, I'm guessing here because I haven't looked at it, but it's probably a, like something like a master's thesis where the abstract or, was in English and the title was in English. And so title and abstract in English. And then they, and, and this is 2000, and, I think this was 2000. 
date on this one? No, it's 14. 14, yeah. So, yeah, sorry, when's 14? Um, but, you know, these are these are their traditional researchers, they, so they may have interloaded it rather than downloaded the PDF. So they may have got it put, sent to them, and when it arrived, they went, oh, right. Abstract in English, read to the paper in foreign language. Oh, right. But that that's why it might flip through. But, you know, it is a bit funny to kind of see. Oh. Also, they never define the population of the cell. So, and they did some papers because they say they were not in the population of the cell. Yeah. So I think it was just to see the cell. Um, it, they're, they're kind of looking at, at um, well, Alzheimer's disease, right? So they're looking at, at people with with an Alzheimer's diagnosis and who are elderly, right? So they um, so they don't really clearly define it, um, but they do it kind of in text by saying this is what we're kind of interested in, right? So it would have it would have been better if they'd clearly defined for the elimination process if you clearly defined why like how you include it in the textbook, right? So we. We would probably pick up on that in your master's thesis when you're writing and say, well, no, no, if you're going to exclude people, you've got to be clear about what is the criteria, right? And you've got longer to write, so you'll generally include all of that. Um, sometimes, and I've, I've, I've had this happen, is you're, you, you're taking a longer paper and you're, you're compacting it down to a six-pager or a 12-pager from a 20-page report, right? And sometimes you cut stuff which you shouldn't cut. And then you get a reader saying, oh, he didn't explain this. And you go, oh, I did six pages. I'm using all of the six pages. I could, I could. What else do I cut to try and put that thing in, right? Um, it's one of the most irritating things when you get a review back is where they just they, they, they say, we want more detail, more detail, more detail, and don't tell you like what to cut. And you've only got like four or six pages. Pages. So. We have six pages. Right. Sometimes you have six pages. Yeah. 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 Often, often they'll limit to six pages. Okay, so if you have a look here, so um, what did you think of these tables and the way they were presented here? Do you think that was relatively clear? What were your thoughts? It's clear, but I don't think it's necessary, really. Uh, the only thing that has is how many amounts of paper and why they excluded it and who they excluded it. I, the, 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 uh, the, the only, well, for me, the value of a table is if you redid the same text search in a year's time, you might get larger numbers. No? And so with large numbers, you could say, oh, okay, so I can see there's been development in this area because um, you could see where people were, like where the most activity was. But that table, again, probably not necessary. I think you're probably right there. I don't think that table is there. What do you think about the characteristics table? So this is now actual ones that they reviewed. Uh, that's actually useful. Mm -hmm. um, if you haven't read the later part where they also summarize all the studies, uh, where they tell about which methods they measured out from and it ran, whether it was random, how the dosages uh, dosage was, uh, how long the period were. And I, find, I find dosage an interesting term. In this case, right? Because you can see they're thinking of like a drug. Right? So, so I, this is this is common in training, and, and some of these with games, and some you could would be pretty good generally common in training. But I wouldn't think of playing games as a dosage, and I'm not sure how you control the amount of experience you get for a play session. Is that I? <clears throat> You know, when we're giving you a drug, I can give you 50 milligrams of something and be sure that you've got 50 milligrams of it. How much game activity can I guarantee you get and how long it's that, right? It's kind of dosage, really? <laughs> but, you know, they're following a, a, a formalized medical system, and so the, the dosage is how much you get of something, so that's what they've gone with. Um, do you, uh, I, I, you've got the, the, the table down the bottom, the, the explanation of all the acronyms down the bottom, um, 
because you need them, because they use lots of acronyms. Um, luckily, I know most of these. Um, the MMEC is a very common one to use, um, and they yeah, and that they include the, the um, a few other memory tests that other people are using. Um, <laughs> Sorry, we, we, we evaded you. <laughs> um, but you can see also the sample sizes are relatively small here. Yes. Right? So I almost to, to encourage you to say, look, if you do your master's thesis, um, we would like you to be around 20 people. Right? But you know, there are people getting published who don't get that high. And in some cases, like, with four people in a study, I mean, I can pick four people at random, and that almost show anything at all, right? Because um, how they respond will be very, very different. So, so yeah, um, some of these um, ones are quite small. Okay, scroll right. around. And so we talked about variability, and then then they have this this experimental and, and um, yeah, external and internal validity quality markers. Okay, so. You guys talk about internal and external validity in the research project methods. This, this was, I, I was kind of, I picked this paper early in this semester to try and get to kind of reinforce those research project methods kind of thing. Um, so you can, hopefully you can see the method in this, this particular lecture. So, um, uh, did they give a rationale? Yes. Were they an experiment? Yes. So these were all actual experiments, rather than quality experiments. Um, was there a control? Well, one of the papers didn't have a control, a couple of the papers didn't have controls. Um, the paper with only four people in it didn't have a control, which isn't surprising, seeing <laughs> if you're treating two and not treating two, what are you, what are you really finding out? I mean, yeah, so um, we knew they're down to that smaller number. Uh, and you can see that they use a relative uh, it, Anover, one way Anovers, two way Anovers, um, the Man Whitney, um, match peers, t tests, non parameter. There's quite a few different ways of doing the statistical analysis. Right? So, again, you guys will have to pick and choose between methods like this. Timing, um, where, like, timing was did they like measure and quantify timing, basically. Right? So, how much information are they giving you about what they're doing? Um, parity, validity, binding, uh, nuisance variables. What are nuisance variables? Not sure. Okay. It gives little numbers. What are those? If you go and have a look at those numbers for the ABC, rather. No, oh, they're, they're there at the bottom. Uh, average duration of disease was not reported. Uh, years of education not reported. Uh, severity of disease not reported. Treatment provider not reported. Diagnosis grade not not specified. Mm -hmm. So um, basically, they're saying you know these are things which they know have influence on Alzheimer's disease, right? So um, uh, average duration of disease, right? Because it's a progressive disease, how long you've had it kind of tells you where in the progress you are, and so how fast you move. If you don't report that. I have no idea if you're up here in the slow progression stage or down here in the really fast progression stage. So that's a, a confounding variable which would confound the results. And if you don't tell me it, then I can't I can't analyze what's going on. Um, years of education. Um, there appears to be that you guys are helping to prevent dementia by having years of education. Right? Um, dementia tends to kick in later if you're well educated. You know, nice, but um, if you don't report it, we don't know that effect on the population. Um, severity of disease obviously does, does matters, uh, does matter, and treatment provider. I'm not sure if that's so much of a problem, but um, still, they decided it was a it was a nuisance variable. It could it could get in the way, um, and diagnosis criteria not specified. Um, so when you're with the diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease, 
if they just say, oh, patients with Alzheimer's do it. Yeah, but how do you, like, which standard are you using? Right? Because there are, there are a lot of different tests and a lot of different standards. And each country uses different standards. And even within America, each state uses different standards because they have kind of a state-based health system where you might be diagnosed as a dementia in one state, but not in another, because they're using a different test, because that medical board has decided to use a different one to the other medical board. And yeah, so knowing what the test was you used and how you met your criteria is, is uh, that's a good one. Oh, let's scroll, keep going through the paper. Um, now, um, so there, there's their table of effect size and confidence and the study. Okay. Um, So they've calculated an overall effect size and a 95% confidence interval. What do those mean? The effect size says whether there's a positive or negative effect on which way they're going. Mm -hmm. But the confidence interval um, defines the limits whether actual value increases in size. Mm -hmm. So each of these studies have reasonably wide. Um, <clears throat> I mean, the the so you've got a, a positive exit. The first one has positive effect size, but you know, within the ninety five percent confidence interval, it's got a negative effect size. So the cognitive gradient could make you worse. The second one, it appears that cognitive training made them worse, forcing them to do mental activity. Advanced dementia faster. That's probably a pretty negative result. But luckily it's been published, right? It's saying, you know, we did this this experiment, we did this cognitive training, and the people who did the training got worse than the people who didn't do training. So that would be should be a cautionary tale. Uh, the next one again is negative, but could be positive. <laughs> Big wide range. Um, fourth one, positive and positive in the whole range. So it so whatever they are doing there appears statistically to be working. Um, <clears throat> and then a negative one, and then a positive one, and then a pretty much irrelevant <laughs> negative 0 0.01. We have absolutely no effect on these people whatsoever. Um, it appears that we were completely useless. And the next one, uh, positive, but with a pinch of negative, and then a small positive with a pinch, with more potential to be negative than positive. All right, so a negative 0.82 and a 0.44 uh, is an, this is an asymmetric confidence interval. All right, because you, if you look at the, the effect size of 0.2 and go negative 0.8 to positive 0.4, what you're saying is that, you know, I've got this number and I don't have an even chance on either side. I've got less on this the, the top end and more on the bottom end. Right? So that's because of the, it's not a normal distribution they've calculated. They've calculated this is this is an uh, a skewed distribution other than a normal distribution. Probably have the multi-layer They might have it they done the others will be higher. Yeah. And so they they you get so sometimes when you talk confidence interval, what they'll mean is they'll will they'll assume it's a normal distribution and put it exactly the same on either side, right? But if they've calculated the non-normal distribution, they're saying, well, you know, well, we'll use the data to work out what our distribution is. They might find that it, it tails off sharper on one side than the other. And so rather than assuming it's just sampling error, they actually calculate a, a, a probability distribution over the data. And say, well, we've got a longer tail. So it, the, the average might actually be way down over here because we have these outliers that are down there, which are more common on the lower side than they are on the top side, so yeah, we've got a skewed feature. I'm not confident of their overall effect size and 95% confidence interval. Because what does that, like, to you guys, what does that say? So they're saying that they've got a 0.39 effect size and to 95% confidence that it's between 
3H and 0.40. That's massively narrow, right? That's a really tight range. Given the massive range of every study they've reviewed. Did they just mean up the lower level? I think they've just done a mean. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, I don't think they've understood how you measure 95% confidence interval with a meta analysis. Right? Because that is just stupid. Right? That's a really, really stupid, stupid confidence interval. Right? Even the mean, the, effect, the mean effect size doesn't really mean a lot, but just averaging the confidence interval is just plain wrong. Right? This is, this is, like, you agree? Yeah. yeah. Right? yeah. If you are reporting all the data and the new analysis of all the data. Yeah. Yes. If you want to get a 95%, if you want that kind of number, you're supposed to take all of the data, replot all of the people, right? Place them in there, and then see how big the distribution is, right? Because this basically saying that there is almost no possibility for it to be below 0.36, for example, right? Because they're saying 95% of the time, the samples will fall in this small range. And yet you point above it, and you go, no, they don't. Almost all the time, they fall outside of that range. Right? You guys have to be careful of doing that sort of just obviously stupid mistake, right? As an as a as an editor, I would have jumped on that and yeah. said, no, 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 you can't get report that. We can't publish that. Right? And this comes to the reviewers didn't check the numbers, right? And often that is the case, right? I, I I'm I, I'm ashamed to say that you'll find that it's relatively common for reviewers not to check all your formulas accurately or to check all your numbers accurately. Right? They won't go through themselves and recalculate your numbers to check that your numbers are right. Because they're reviewers, they're trying to get this done at 11 o'clock at night for the midnight deadline, and they're scanning through it trying to work out if it makes reasonable sense. And I would say the reviewers kind of just missed that obviously flawed. I think it's obvious. You think it's obvious? Yeah. Okay. Can you guys? Can you? Can you? Go, I understand why that's an obvious mistake and an obvious flaw. Because if you even, even most of the data is outside of ninety-five. Almost all the data is outside of that that confidence interval. It can't make sense. No. And if you even if you're kind of, if you thought about it slightly differently from let's just average them all up, right? If I did a take away one. And then re-averaged. Where would what average would that give me? Right. So uh, uh, remove one and, and do the average. And if that falls outside of your ninety five percent confidence interval, then you're almost certainly not got a ninety five percent confidence interval, right? Because if I remove, like, if I have a ninety five percent confidence interval, I'm saying that one in twenty of these will fall outside of that range. Okay. So if I take those effect sizes. And I pick one at random. Does it fall in the range? So if you pick mm -hmm. Manet Al from 2012, from 0.55 to 205, there that, that's the largest study. They have 20, no, next to the second largest study. Mm -hmm. 20 in the study. The other ones are smaller. Yeah. So that's the bigger one. Yeah. Yes. That's the graph. Yeah. Where you get the yeah. So if you scroll up to the graph, you can see the. Now I'm there, I'm I'm disappointed they didn't do this graph properly. Okay. They also didn't do this graph properly. It's, it's, I, I, they've put this, them in, but they've not done effect size the way I would want them to. Now, you, you can see that size of the point is the size of the, 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 the study. Okay. So here you can see that the larger the, the larger the square, the bigger. But why are they sorted alphabetically? Why does that make any sense at all to sort these studies alphabetically top to bottom? Right? That's that's just a random who happened to be the named author, right? That's a that's a completely random, irrelevant. But if you were one of the authors, you want to know where you and the <laughs> you're one of the authors, you're looking for your name. Oh yeah, so did me, sorry. <laughs> but for any other purposes. For you know, any other purpose, um, it, it's an irrelevant ordering. Right? So this is a mis this this is also a, a bad way of showing this. What would be more normal 
group would be the the you know that that triangle plot I sh sh showed you right the one that went that way. You would have large studies at one end and small studies at the other, right? Because what you'd assume is that small studies because they have fewer they they have fewer uh, measurements they have a wider range, so they're expected to fall away all over the place, and the large studies are expected to be much smaller in their variation. And so I would have liked to see the smaller studies put at the top of this graph and the bigger studies at the bottom, right? To sim simulate that whole large studies have, like small studies have lots of very small, like big studies have very few. Okay, so, <clears throat> and you pick that one, and you know, most of them um, overlap. In fact, if you do a lie, you can just get every one of them overlapping with 0.4. Just <laughs> right, but then to say ninety-five percent confidence interval that it's between point three eight, and <laughs> it's kind of no, nah. no, that's that silliness because you would need a confidence interval that basically I, I would think would encompass the center of all of those, right? So you'd be talking about having more like a, a negative point five to positive, uh, or, yeah, negative point five to positive one point five. That for me. Would feel more like the right confidence interval, right? But um, I think I think what they've done, I think they've averaged the lower and they've averaged the upper, and then gone, oh, well, tricked <laughs> without understanding. So this is the problem with doing doing math, right? I'm not sure if they weighted the average either. Mm -hmm. you, you would need to weight the average to get. I don't think they weighted the average either. No, so not. Because they, I think they just sum them up. So why would why would you weight the average? No, why would you weight the average? Mm -hmm. That's how you do. Uh, when, uh, Yeah, more, more important, there's a bit more detail around the word more important. More significant? It, it's, it's, well, significant. There, are, there are more sample points, right? So, for example, a button here, yeah, it represents more sample points. So, if you're actually averaging them, each person in the large study would, re if you wait, each person gets the same amount of influence on the end average. Whereas, if you know, I take a class of of a um, hundred people and average their height, and then I take two people and average their height, and then just average those two numbers together, the weighting will drop. So, yeah. So um, I, I don't. Think that, <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm kind of I was hoping that you guys could see. Would, would work out that this there are bits of this paper which are really really bad. There are bits which are quite good. Okay, I like the way that they've they've been very specific about how they include the next. <coughs> I like how they report the graph on on like they report the table of what all the studies do, but I'm not confident about that average, and I'm not happy with the way they've presented that 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 forest plot. Uh, it should be a um, they should weight the heavy ones down the bottom rather than do it alphabetically. Okay, and then you scroll, scroll, scroll and um, so yeah, then they give a summary of each of the the papers. Oh, it's got the very least to make sure I can't go down my computer right and come up with things that are used and other optimists. Um, they also talked about the two of the experiments where one had a large, uh, large uh, participant group, while the other had a small one, and they somewhat uh, concluded that the population size didn't matter for that, for those two particular studies. I'm not sure why, but they did. Okay. Do we some of the moderating factors? Um, <coughs> So in terms of their, their their conclusion, which is that you know it seems to have a mildly positive benefit, um, what do you guys thought on on the reviews and of 
can we read those summaries? Do you think Colin and Franny had that? Would, would you read a Mises to your grandparents? Just like a more cost effective way, method to do it, rather than have a kind of uh, auspicious way to do it for you. Uh, it's easier to repeat uh, all times. So, um, do you think there may be, because uh, part of this whole games for um, Alzheimer's and games for the elderly and games for trying and keeping cognitively active, um, we're relying on some sort of effect in here to justify spending effort doing this. Right? So we're currently in a, in a um, uh, applying for an EU grant with Northampton University on, um, in, in this year. Right? Games for, for Alzheimer's. Um, and <clears throat> they're saying mildly positive. Do you think they've produced enough evidence to back up their, their conclusion? I'm sure that uh, as a doctor with their severity of their disease, I could play a large role in that result. I mean, there was many studies that reported disability affected by patients. Um, it, it looks like it is more effective than therapeutic um, re uh, rehabilitation or treatment and there are uh, very many options for treating people with uh, the dementia or Alzheimer's or dementia. Mm. Um, so so you're, uh, from, from that reading you would say that, that the time to use it would be when you're just starting to get it. Symptoms, right? So it keeps you active longer rather than recovery from. Um, even though I think they've got a massively flawed overall number, that 0.4 and tiny confidence interval is just obviously wrong. Um, that doesn't invalidate their conclusion necessarily that there is a mild positive effect, right? They've just done their math. 